You're listening to WQPA 89.3 FM, Shirley Fitchburg, Queen of Perpetual Help. Thank you for tuning in to WQPH's Local Matters. On this week's broadcast, the return of Maureen Capistron, who is the author of Heaven's Helper, My Little Star. That's available on Amazon. And she will be answering more questions, telling a few stories about writing the book. And she will also talk about her healing services that she offers from time to time. A special thanks to Angela Tomlinson, who made this broadcast happen. To learn more about WSFI, visit WSFICatholicRadio.org. Now the conclusion of this series. So we're back with Angela at WSFI and our famous guest, Maureen Capistran. If you haven't had a chance to read her book or get it, you can find it on Amazon, Heaven's Helper, My Little Star, A Woman in Daily Communication with Heaven, Helping Those in Need. And that's so true, Maureen. Welcome back. Can I just ask everyone? Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Could I just ask you, we got a text message during the break from Danny, a friend of ours in adoration. Her brother, Matt, 41, at 5.30 Boston time, will be going for a lung transplant. If we could please keep everybody uh, praying for him. This is a really tough road he has ahead of him. So, Maureen, if I could ask your prayers, and we'll get back to a lighter side. I think Lisa has um, another thing she'd like to read. Sure. Okay. Maureen, um, I really like this little story that I'm going to read now. It's entitled, What Should I Do With These Religious Articles? People often feel the need to give me something. When I've helped them, of course, I wouldn't accept money. I would suggest they could make a donation to a charity of their choice. I received many rosaries, prayer cards, statues, pictures of Jesus and Our Lady. I had so many of these articles and did not know what to do with them all. I asked St. Michael, my little star, we will recycle these religious articles, he said. Whenever you go out to sit with a group, I will instruct you as to which items you should take and who to give them to. It was truly unbelievable what I started to witness in simply giving away these religious things. For example, St. Michael told me to give one woman a pair of rosary beads from Lourdes. When I did, the woman burst into tears and said, how did you know? I just returned from Lourdes and lost my rosary beads on the plane. I gave a prayer card to a man. He exclaimed, how did you know that St. Joseph was my favorite saint? St. Michael chose the perfect articles for the people I would be sitting with that day. The pace picked up and I found myself inundated. I was sitting with more and more people. Any comment, Maureen? I think I, I, I wrote that in there because I want the people to know that heaven knows every single detail of every, to the smallest, the smallest details of our life to the largest details they they know everything about us and they know right down to you know what prayer card we would like or he knew the woman lost her rosary beads um or another one you know one woman he gave her a, a bracelet that said love on it and then later on she told me that she could never love so again the reason why i put that story in there is because they they know every single thing about us right down to the smallest detail and they want to the biggest thing is love they want us to love so they want to show the small things to other people that that seems like a very small thing but when you're the person receiving those rosary beads um it really strengthens that person's faith a lot um, and it's really amazing, again, how they know all the details of whoever it is that's sitting in front of me. Any comment, Lisa? You have a lot of spiritual things to give away, don't you? I do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of mind-blowing that they pay such attention to all these little details about our own individual personalities and what means the most to us. I, it's It just really is, a, I think, a comforting paragraph to know how much they mm-hmm. they care about us yes. and are mm-hmm. involved in our lives. It might not seem like it to us, but really I, so involved in our lives. It's very, very powerful. Very involved, and, and, and again, to the smallest details of, of he would pick out um, a Christmas present for a child with cancer, and it would have to be a blue wristwatch. 
Um, and, that, and, and that's exactly what the child wanted was a blue wristwatch. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. But we also have to remember that he has full knowledge. So he knows everything about everything. Um, so it's, it, is, it is amazing um, to watch him work. It's, it's so beautiful to see the people receive his gifts. Yes. What is that where they get more information about your travels for the um, yeah. St. Raphael oil? Would you like to give that mm-hmm. as a reference yeah, also? Yeah, post. Mm-hmm. So, right. Yeah, so that will be posted on their website. And also for the people in our area of WQPH, but anybody like my sister could come from Chicago on June 25th if she's not busy um, because Maureen's going to be giving a talk at Still River on our uh, day retreat on the 25th of June at St. Benedict Abbey. If you go on our website, wqphradio.org, there's a a flyer there that Lisa was kind enough to post, and you can sign up. We only have 17 seats left, Maureen. Sad. Wow. So, okay, so moving forward, Annie has another story she'd like to read. I like all of your stories, but this one about Hawk Come... It was so moving mm-hmm. to me, so beautiful, um, about the Native American couple. Um, mm-hmm. A Native American couple we worked, oh, we worked with, lost their young son to cancer. After the funeral, we went to the cemetery. It was a terrible day with torrential rains. A tent had been erected over the grave, and all the people from the funeral were were gathered there. After the graveside prayer had concluded, the father of the little boy started yelling, Hawk, come! Hawk, come! Hawk, come! Startled and not understanding this, I called for St. Michael and asked him what was happening. I heard him say, wait and watch. The father then stepped outside the tent, looking up in the pelting rain and kneeled in the mud all the while yelling, God sent Hawk, God sent Hawk. It was heartbreaking to watch this grieving man. We all turned and stared at the sky, and at that moment we all saw a hawk circling above the tent. As soon as the first hawk appeared, two more joined in and circled above. The father stood up and continued staring at them. As quickly as they had appeared, they disappeared. The father then bowed his head, knelt down, and seemed at peace. I later learned that this man believed God sends a hawk to take a soul to heaven. We have such a kind, loving, merciful God. He sends the hawks to comfort this family in their grief. I saw clearly how merciful God was in our times of great distress. That is perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. In the 22 years that I've been doing this, I have to admit that was one of the most amazing things um, that I ever witnessed um, because I had no idea what was going to happen. And, and again, I was calling to St. Michael, and he just said, you know, wait and watch. Uh, and um, God the Father, again, he, he sent the hawks to, to comfort the Father. And I think you have another story like that in your book because uh, my friend Sue she was married to a Native American, and at his funeral, uh, this is why she couldn't wait to come over here and meet you so fast, she read that story about the hawk coming, and when her husband Reese died, that's what happened, that a hawk came in the Oak Grove Cemetery, and everybody was screaming, and she never knew what that meant until she read your book, and she cried and cried and cried. She needed wow. to, to know that peace, Maureen, that you brought by sharing that story about how the Native Americans believe the hawk comes, right? Mm-hmm. Very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Anybody else have a comment <laughs> on this? Mm-hmm. Maureen, do you want to go that on to that? Go ahead. A lot of people have different beliefs. A lot of people, um, you know, in this particular case, his belief in God was so strong that he believes that the hawk comes and takes his son's soul to heaven. Um, now, if you were to tell, you know, a Christian that, they would say, no, that, that's not so. Um, and it may not be so. And, and, and who are we to say whether it's so or not so? Um, but but at, at the end of the day, 
God, the, because his, this man's belief was so strong in God, God answered him, and he sent the hawks. Right. Angela, so, any thoughts? Um, it's just an, amazing what he can do. I mean, God, he can do anything. I've seen so many miracles over the years. Nothing surprises me anymore. Right. Angela, do you have a comment on that? Um, no, I was looking at a different story. Okay, can you share with, that? Um, yeah, it was so interesting to me. Okay. It was the woman who prays on the bus morning. Oh. Yes. And find it. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Do you remember which one it was? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I sat with this woman who was who had stage four um, bone cancer, and she was crying. Um, and I called to St. Michael to try to give her some comfort because... She wanted to go on one last vacation, and her question was, you know, do I have enough time to go on a vacation, or is God going to take me home? And in speaking with heaven throughout the years, they, they don't foretell, but as an instrument, it's my, it's, it's my job to ask. So I sat there, and I called to St. Michael, and I heard Jesus. And Jesus said, tell her, when she was a little girl... Since she was a little girl, every day on the school bus, she would pray to me and talk to me. And she never missed a day. And tell her I heard all of her prayers. Reiterated that to, to the woman, and, and she just came off her chair. She, and, and she was like, I, I just, I can't believe this. No, nobody knows that. Nobody knows it. So it's really amazing when I sit with somebody, most of the time I get St. Michael, but sometimes if somebody's very prayerful or they do, or, or they're very childlike, um, and, and they've been praying to Jesus since they were small. Jesus will come and, and speak with them. Or um, sometimes if somebody's very devoted to the Blessed Mother, I was doing a healing service once in Rhode Island, and, you know, there was like 350, 400 people there, and it was St. Michael the whole night, and I prayed over one woman, and all of a sudden I heard the Blessed Mother, and she said, thank her, my love, for the work that she does for me. And, and, and I had no idea that the woman um, would take Our Lady statue from church to church to church, and she'd take it on the airplane, and she, and she would buy a ticket and put it in the seat next to her. And, and so, you know, how would, I know, I, how would I know that? But it's amazing how heaven will come down and speak to um, somebody that has a strong devotion to them, or they, you know, they've prayed to them their whole life. Um, it, it, it is just you know, after 22 years, it's just, it's, it is, it's amazing. It just, is, it is amazing to, to watch heaven work. Yes. You know, I think a lot of times people who are people of faith, probably most of the people listening to this program, when things aren't working out the way they expect them to work out, mm -hmm. they think that all of that is forgotten. What would you say to that? Nothing is forgotten. Um, God knows every good deed that we've done for him. He knows every prayer that we've said. He knows every hair on our head. He knows everything. He has full knowledge. So if their prayer is not being answered, it's because God can see ahead and it might not be the right path for them. But if they're not getting what they're praying for, it's because God is going to give them something better. Um, now, sometimes people get frustrated because it takes time. And what they don't realize is, is Jesus is working through it. Um, for them. So sometimes it seems like the door's not opening, it's not opening, and, and I hear this all the time, why isn't my prayer being answered? And the only thing that I can tell you is what I was taught from heaven is that only a small percentage of prayers get answered immediately. And so when somebody prays, Jesus will say, not now, maybe down the road, or I have something better for you. So we just have to sit back and trust in Jesus and let him work through it for us. Um, and many a times, like I said, very small percentage of the time, we're going to get what we're praying for. And people say, well, why? You know, why can't I have my boyfriend back? Well, that's because Jesus can see ahead and we can't, and he might have something better for you. And it's always the whys. Well, why can't I have this? Or why can't I have that? And I don't know the answers to that. But one thing I do know is Jesus knows. Um, and so we must put our trust in him 
and be patient and continue to pray. And and if we don't get what we're praying for, there's, it's a reason why. There's a reason why, but he will give you something better. Beautiful. Hmm. We were all very enthralled with that really detailed uh, thing that we can share with people who ask us those questions, Maureen, you know? You know, people in our Adoration Chapel that say, why, why, why? Yes, it's, it's so common, you know, through the years. It is just so common. That's what everybody asks. Well, I've been praying for five years. I had one woman say to me, I had one mother say to me, I've been praying for my daughter for five years that she goes back with her husband. It's not right. She has to go back with her husband. So heaven immediately show, had shown me that there was a lot of abuse there. Um, So I said to her, I said, as a mother, would you want your daughter to be abused? And she's like, no. I said, well, heaven is answering your prayer. Oh, what courage Mm -hmm. that took. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Because it's true. I mean, Jesus doesn't want any of us to be abused. So the mother's there praying because she thinks it's wrong that, you know, in the Catholic world, it's wrong to, you know, to separate from your husband. Well, the woman was being, you know, battered and abused um so the mother's praying to jesus you know have my daughter go back with her husband that's that's the right the catholic that's the right thing to do and and you know saint michael's telling me no because jesus doesn't want any of his children to be abused in any way so you know again many a time what we're praying for we think we know what's right but we really don't but Jesus does know, and we have to trust in that. All right, it's all about the trust. That's all about the trust. If we could just let go and let God, instead of like the wondering in our mind, what if, what, it's just we pray every day for God to increase our trust in Him. That's the only mm-hmm. way we can live. Mm-hmm. So, and we were only down here a very short time in yes. comparison to eternity, right? Yes. So. I just say, let it go and let it be when something happens. And a lot of times that's easier said than done. And, you know, we end up suffering from anxiety or, um, you know, disappointment or or whatever it may be. Um, We lose a loved one or or whatever. But, again, we have to realize that we're only down here a short time. If we lose a loved one, again, this is the most important thing I tell people, it's just a temporary separation. And... And there are no boundaries in heaven. I've had I've had widows ask me, well, what happens if I find somebody else and I get remarried again? Then when I die, do I have to pick the husband that I married? Or what about my husband that died? And St. Michael's answer to that is, in heaven there's no boundary. So, you know, your loved one that's on the other side does want you to continue on down here, and they do want you to find somebody else, and they do want you to be loved. And when you die, you'll reunite with them. And then when your other partner dies, you'll, there, there are no boundaries. We'll see everybody. Won't that be glorious? Exactly. Yeah. What a glory day that will be, I'll tell you. <laughs> a, yes. lot, a lot of yeah. us is hearing, our friends are saying they've lost all their friends. And they have no yes. one to pray. And they have yes. no one to pray with. What's that? What's the answer? Do they need someone to pray with them or... Should they go on a, a personal prayer with Jesus when you feel so abandoned? I, you know, I would, hmm? my, my opinion, and there's, there's nothing better than a personal bond with Jesus, and then if you, if you have an earthly friend, it's a plus. Good answer. Uh, Jesus will never let you down. Very good. Well, we're getting... Well, sometimes he's the only one that, he's the only one who can, I know with me, there's nothing any human being can do to help the things I worry about. I mean, I could talk right. about it, but what's the point? <laughs> they can't solve them. No. You know, That's right. It's really, right. He, it really does just come down to him and right. what he knows is best. Exactly. Exactly. And sometimes, Angela, when we want something and we keep pushing and pushing and pushing and we just keep hitting a wall, hitting a wall, hitting a wall, sometimes that, that is his answer. That's not the way, right? So he'll he'll just let you continue, you know, to hit a wall, and you know, and no matter what you try, you try going right, you try going left, you try this, you, you know, you're trying everything, 
to, to fix your problem or to try to make something work and nothing is working. And I look up and I'm like, Jesus, really? I mean, I'm trying this, I'm trying that. And he'll say, my love, I know what's best. Trust in me. So, and then down the road, a year down the road, six months down, three months down the road, you see something that unfolds. And when you, when you see it unfold, you're like, oh, my God, thank God he didn't answer that prayer. Because if he did, I would really be in trouble right now. I'd really be stuck right now. Right. Well, I know when I'm praying, if I keep, you know, I do the prayers in the morning. If something keeps popping in my mind as I'm going through the prayers, mm-hmm. to ask them for something, I feel as though now it's gone beyond being a commitment and it's become being a, an attachment. That it almost, mm-hmm. like for me, it's almost like become a false god. That it keeps coming in my mind and now it's blocking my ability to take two steps back because I'm, I'm kind of obsessing about, like you just said, the answer to a problem. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and again, you know, from my own experience is if you ask and you're praying for something and you keep hitting a wall, obviously something's wrong, you're going the wrong way or wait it out or there might be something better coming or a different way of doing it that's going to be easier or like Our Lady has told me on many, many occasions, know that you're being protected. I'll pray for something. And it, and it won't come through, and I'll pray to the Blessed Mother, and I'll ask her why, and, she, and she, of course she won't foretell, but she'll say, my love, know you're being protected. So. That's great advice. It, it, it's easy, it's easier for me to understand and trust it, because I can hear her, but, I, but you'll probably get more merit if you can achieve it by accomplishing it without hearing her. This has been a very deep day. We've really gotten into some beautiful um, topics, Maureen. Um, and, of course, we're all so inspired, aren't we, everyone? Absolutely. Exactly, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we look forward. I, I do have a couple of prayer yeah. requests. Marianne, is it okay if sure, I... Sure, sure. Go right have, ahead. I, okay. So one of them just came across a little while ago. He is a young man, and he is praying about his architectural career. He feels like the devil is blocking him, like you were just talking about. He really wants to use his gifts for God, but he feels as though he's being blocked from being able to do that. So he's asked okay. for prayers. So okay. That? My answer to that is let's not give Satan credit. Um, if he's very prayerful, I find it very hard to believe that God would allow Satan to block that. Um Keep praying, and um, like Father Aniello taught me, you know, if you're fishing in this area and you're not you're not catching any fish, move your boat and go fish someplace else. So um, maybe rethink it and pray on it, and let Jesus's will be done. Mm-hmm. But people give Satan too much credit when something isn't going correctly or going their way. They give him this credit. They think, you know, that it's him blocking it. And, you know, I got a flat tire. He didn't want me to go to the supermarket, so I got a flat. And honestly, to me, that's just, you know, that's craziness. Um, it's just all fear-based. So I would say to him, stay steadfast in his prayer. No, God has a plan for him. And, you know, continue on his way. Maybe rethink things and, and then you know, ask God to open the correct door for him. Uh, But he also has to stay open-minded, too. Open-minded to the fact of maybe you have to switch lanes. You know, maybe, okay, I've tried this and tried this and tried this. I'm going in this direction. I'm beating my head up against the wall. It's not working. Okay, rethink it and maybe try going a different way. Thank you. There's another woman, Sandra, who's 75 years old, and she's been suffering for many years from a tumor inside her pituitary gland. Uh, In addition, she has an aortic aneurysm, which is inoperable, and uh, she's very tense and stressed out because she's afraid it could burst any minute, and she's asked for prayers. 
Okay. And I will I tell her I will keep her in my prayers, and um, it might be helpful if she goes on the St. Raphael website and orders some um, St. Raphael oil and say the St. Raphael prayer and let him intercede for her as well. That's a great thing. And Mary Ann, we're coming up to a close here. Yes. Go ahead. Thank Sam, you. But- Thank you all for listening today. I hope you're as happy as we are. And may God bless you and Maureen Capistrian. God bless you. You are such a gift to us. Thank you. And you can listen to Maureen. She's on, now she's on the last Thursday of every month. Or the fourth Thursday of every month. Is that right, Maureen? We're on the fourth Thursday of every month at 3 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. God bless. Are we going to end it with a prayer? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so my sister Paulette would like to say the prayer. Okay, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings you have given us in our lives. You have provided us with more than we could ever even imagine. You have given us the best friends and family who care and help us in good and bad times. Lord, thank you for keeping us safe during our journey and for protecting us from bad situations. You always help us to make the right decisions. So you speak to us in so many ways, directing us sometimes through other people. We are so grateful to you for all the blessings you have given us. Lord, don't let me forget to show my gratitude and my prayers. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 On the WQPH Community Calendar. We were blessed to plan a wonderful day retreat at St. Benedict's Abbey on 252 Still River Road, Still River, Mass. Mass, luncheon, and more. Save the day. This time it's going to be June 25th, $55, which includes a cooked lunch. There's going to be a guest speaker of Ron and Linda Curlip from the Traveling Rosaries Apostolate. Also, we're going to have Maureen Capistan, who I've talked about her book, Heaven's Helper, on the show before. There's going to be a Q&A, again, June 25th. If you are interested, call 781-391-1396 to get tickets, or you can send a text to 617-459-8735. Call 781-391-1396 or text 617-459-8735. To get tickets to that event, remember the last one sold out. You should not miss it. Thank you for listening to another edition of WQPH's Local Matters. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast and hope you have a blessed week.